Hey, by Thomas here. And guess where we are? We are back to the Circle Sawmill of Greene County. Now, there's a lot of uh, bullshittery over there going on, I'll say. But uh, those individuals over there, so my dad's over there too, but he is now a Sawyer. He's got quite a few hours and he's ran sawmills now for, for a while. So I feel he's a, a great addition to here. But you got Robert Westfold. He is, you know, he's run sawmills since the, the mid 90s. And you got his cousin over here, two dogs, Mr. Donald. Uh, they have run this mill here for quite a long time too. And Mr. Donald used to be a logger. A lot of cool stuff going on here, but this mill here, I think they've had this since like the 80s or something like that. And they tore it down up in the Tupelo, Mississippi area, put it on two truckload trailers, and hauled it down here and rebuilt it. And he's been cutting on this thing since the 80s. So very impressive. This is a great video. I've been wanting to come out here for uh, a second video. Um, but this machine is awesome. It's been around the block or two. What kind of mill is this, you said? This is left hand. Left I mean, hand. It all runs to the left. But see, they make them. You can reverse be on that side, you know, make a right hand. Okay. It, but it's... Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it did. Sound like a, something screaming over there. <laughs> yeah, that bell. <laughs> but no, so each one of these, te I mean, do you ch how often do you change these out? When it wears out. Okay. I don't change it till it wears out. Gotcha. I buy the bit. Okay. From Corinth, Mississippi. Mm hmm. And some up in Minnesota. I order some out of Minnesota, too. Yeah. Right next uh, to, uh, or Menominee Saw might have them, too. I don't know if I forgot the name of it. I'd have to look on that invoice in there. But I order some from them. Okay. Uh, Corinth has got to where they don't want to sell, but so so many okay used to i could order 50 or 100 300 what have you but last time i tried to order from them they said we can't sell i've got to sell a whole i've got several of them i forgot how many it might have been two or three boxes and i said no i'm not doing that because you know now a big sawmill yeah that'd be all right but like man i don't need i don't need 200 meat of uh, teeth sitting in there for a year so are these the ones you use a tool just to put them in there? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll show you. Yeah, if you got that tool, that'd be great. You got a tool that rolls it in and rolls it out. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Are they pretty easy to do? Yeah, Mr. Roberts got Shasta up here, brought Shasta up here for us. <laughs> there she is. There she is, Tom. There's a teeth yeah. in a pack. <laughs> okay. You like that? This is a nine thirty second, uh, eleven thirty second tooth. Okay. Uh, and I ordered. I had they was I don't know one hundred and fifty or so in there. But this here, this puts them in and takes them out. Okay. You, I'll I'll just demonstrate. For you. All right. Now you go to take it out. Okay, so that goes through the, it's like through the hole, it's like There's your a shaft. Hole in that saw, see? Ah, and that causes a pivot point, like something yeah. you can pivot off and of. You click up on it like that hard. Okay. And it'll roll that tooth out. Gotcha. And that shank, you just leave it in there. Yeah. And you set the tooth, take that out, and you set the other tooth on there and push it back down. Like that. Awesome. And it okay. In. That is off. really cool. So, I mean, you can change this out throughout the day if you hit rocks or whatnot. Oh yeah, if I, I, I hit a, I think I told you, I hit a, a big boat in a log about the size of that one, 20 feet long. Mm-hmm. Took 52 teeth out of this blade. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's. Took 52 of them. That's now. a bad day. Well, I mean, and I, and I got to where if any logs come out of a yard or anything like that, mm -hmm. I check them. Because I. I don't think I've ever cut over four or five logs that come out of a yard that didn't have nails in it. <laughs> Little nail ain't bad. It'll chip two or three of them, you know. Okay. But big nails, I hit that one. It was a, a I call it a drift boat. Okay. A big boat. And it did, wasn't in the log straight. I hit it like this. Oh, long ways, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> diagonal across yeah. it. Yeah. The old saying is, cat <laughs> <laughs> And it took 52 teeth out of it. 
Oh, oh man. Oh. Did it hurt the blade itself? No, it didn't hurt the blade. This one here has got a tooth out of it. It's been that way ever since I owned it. Okay. I bought this one up. Oh, I see it, yeah. I bought Look at this that. one up in uh, uh, Ithrys, Tennessee, this blade. Okay. Uh, I bought two of them, this one and another one. And I run the other one, and it done pretty good. But this one here is a little thicker than the one I was running. And the other one I bought. So I put this one on there, and it cut so good, it's got a tooth out of it. I can have that fixed. You can have that put back on it. Oh, but it cut fine. Mm -hmm. You know that's how it is. That tooth there. So how long can you run a blade before? I mean, has this blade been hammered? Have you hammered it before? Or? I ain't never had to hammer it. Okay. Wow. No. Uh, but if you're sawing, I mean, if you're running like eight hours a day commercially, mm -hmm. day, uh, probably you might have it checked in a year. Okay. Oh, uh, I don't know just how I, a good blade and a good meal is set up running right. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't uh, you don't hammer it regular. Gotcha. If, it, if it's hammered right to start with, fixed right, you don't hammer it regular. And that I remember last time you said you you kind of dish it, and as it comes up to RPM, she straightens up. That's right. See right. That's what I was telling you. See. See that crack? Uh huh. Yeah, I see that. Open up that gap there. So what he's doing is he's flexing that. That uh, whenever that thing winds up to that seven hundred RPM, yep, it'll be sitting up there like that. Okay. And then come that. See that thing got tension. Yeah, yeah. And without that water, it don't have that good tension. Gotcha. If the sun shines on it, mm hmm. Oh, uh, if, if that if the sun comes nowhere and shines right on that blade to get hot, it'll want to go the other way. Okay. And it's cool with that water, keeps that tension. It's made like a saucer. When Got you get it yeah. hammered, when you hammer it, it's gonna have a little, it's supposed to have from the tip of this tooth straight through that there to the tip of that, it should have, if you stretch a string or put a straight edge, it should have about an eighth of an inch crack right in okay. the middle. Okay, cool. That's, That's cool. really cool. That there, uh, that keeps that tension on it. Mm -hmm. right? And when you wind it up, I mean, it'll, It'll stretch out. It'll stand up there just as straight, whatever it winds up. Uh, That's pretty neat. Yeah, I'm, I'll tell you about your buddy up there. I'll tell you. <laughs> there's a lot. You just got to you just got to fool with it and learn. Uh huh. I mean, you're gonna saw a lot of sharp ended and sideways boards and all that there till you learn how could I. And I've been around with sawmills up the road here, but I never had on one. I had never run one. Mm -hmm. All together different. I but you got you got this one in the eighties or so. Um, no, I got it in the nineties. Okay. I've had this mill about twenty three years, something like that. Okay. Uh, so you've learned a lot. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I did. I had all. There was a guy I lived right up here. Was a sawmill professional mm -hmm. he set up himself he moved everywhere he had a sawmill himself and he'd move all he'd move on a piece of little timber if it was a big timber mm -hmm. he'd move the mill and set it up and set that thing up where it cut good and cut your travel down and, down and people and and people got him to go to their mills and set them up to help they set that thing up wow he was a he was a professional at it hmm. and uh but he when i bought this mill he was old and he was in bad shape. Mm -hmm. Couldn't come down here. Gotcha. And then a, uh, a year or so after that, he died. Mm. But I had, I was depending on him to help me set this thing up. <laughs> See, but you he, learned through the school of hard knocks. What you're telling me? I didn't yeah. know anybody else. Uh huh. Uh, but these people can tell you all kind of things. Oh man, you got to do this, do that. So I know one thing. I know why your carriage is so good. It's a Corley. And it's it's uh, manufactured in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the best state in the world. So that's why it's so good. Well, it's, it's, it's manufactured yep. in Chattanooga. That knee is. Mm -hmm. That carriage was built in Corinth. Well, that knee is the best part on there. Yeah. That's their uh, bottom frame and all. Yeah. Built in Corinth. They built them right in. Uh, I've been up there too that. Uh, place in Chattanooga 
Matter of fact, I had a gear busted. I believe one on this end. I busted a big gear. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just got in the car and... There you go. Went up there and got, went up there and got it straight back. All right. Well, let's, let's watch you crank this sucker up and see what she can do. your clutch that it starts to engage the blade yep sure is so again you got the shaft coming off here to a larger pulley over there goes through a hydraulic tank here yep and then you got a belt that goes down below to his auger that goes to carry out his sawdust and then you've got uh, the shaft that comes off there to the hydraulic pump, then onto the blade itself. What is this smaller one right here? That little... Ah, that's his conveyor. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. There you have it. She's spinning. <laughs> Everything on here is spinning. And again, uh, these machines... You just have to be very aware of your surroundings all the time. Never get yourself in a pinch point. Never put yourself and grab a belt. Put your hand on a spinning object. Yeah. Awareness is key. <laughs> He's about to throttle her up. She's running now. Yeah. That blade had a little bit of wobble to it. Now it's straight out. Booking. Yeah. All right. That's your air pneumatics.
watch what Mr. Roberts doing over there. Now, Donald wanted to keep on going. Unfortunately, my dad and I, we got to head back north, so <laughs> we had to cut her short. 
But he expected to get at least 60 logs out of us today, and we we, we I, fell short of that. I told him, I told him, I told y'all what he said, that he had 60 logs here, and y'all could leave when they were split up. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Please. Right. And it's, and it's beautiful. It's pure ladder. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, I, the older the log is, like this right here, you can see the ladder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Fat lighter. Pure dynamite. Yeah. That's dynamite. Grind it up. They make dynamite out of it. I got a, that log lid here in front of the uh, forklift. Yonder. It's got a big limb on it. I'm going to cut it off. And that's pretty cool. It's raining. <laughs> I hear it. <laughs> Donald can't hear nothing. <laughs> that was very apparent that's there. His mama lived a little over a quarter of a mile from his house. And they had to be careful what they said on the porch because she could hear it. Could yeah. My mama could hear it. <laughs> she had exceptional hearing. The night she died, she'd been unconscious since 12 o'clock that day. <laughs> I went up there and said something to her and she didn't let off. She was laying on her side and she was unconscious. Philip, my brother, said, Hey, Mama, you hear me? Said, <laughs> and she died. Oh, wow. Oh, that's she can hear. I'm telling you. Yes. And all, all our brothers and sisters, death is a post. And y'all are cousins. First cousin. First cousin. Yeah. My, I got to, I got they to love each me. other. They're, they're best friends, too. <laughs> my, my daddy was a half MacDonald, his, his mom, and MacDonald, most of them didn't hear me. Right. They got only 40, 50 years old. Well, it's probably from being two feet away from a diesel running it. Well, I know what they were buying. I had a skitter, yeah. log skitter. And back 45 years ago, 50 years ago, when I first started logging, they didn't know about nothing about no ear plugs. Uh, I thought he had a pipe about that long sticking right over with it. Same motor up and up there. And that thing, ah, boy, it was good bellowing. And we we logged the men, we, me and Philip logged all day, down right till dark. And we got over late, and there'd be a blaze of fire about that long sticking out of that pipe. Blaze of bomb. <laughs> and you you get off that thing, and your head would pull us away. Pull us away, baby. His head did. <laughs> I walked, I was logging up the river about four miles up there. And I went to town, something, I went on the courthouse steps, I could hear my skitter, but mom! Up there, that river small, up the hill. Mm -hmm. Circle saw mills in this country has kind of went the way that dairies did. Yeah. They used to, everybody around, every few miles, every. People had dairies, dairy farms, where they milked and they come get the milk. They ain't none of them no more. They've done done away with all of them. They're all in Wisconsin, people. where I'm at now. Yeah, up there in Wisconsin. <laughs> when I was a teenager, there was one, two, there was three sawmills at least. Uh, up here in Avery, there was uh, two sawmills. You like this one up there? Out there at Pisgah. My wife's uncle, he had one out there for years and years and years. That's the one we went and at. Just like this, that meal y'all went and looked at mm -hmm. was set up just like this meal right here. Only it was on the ground. It yeah. went up on the floor. That's right. It was on the ground. That meal. They ain't said how many million feet that <coughs> Morgan Hicks cut with that meal. Oh, yeah. He worked it. Now, he worked it eight hours a day, every day. Mm. Five days a week. It'd be raining, sleep, freezing, it didn't matter. To work five days a week. <clears throat> there were people building out of lumber then. All houses was lumber. And he had a big planter <laughs> down there in that fuller head. Yeah. And he had that. Things uh, a monster. Put up that <laughs> drop side, six inch and eight inch. He run it to that planter. Awesome. Well, again, I appreciate y'all. This is awesome. All right, so we're back out here and we had to bring up this. What do you call that, Mr. Robert? This is a rolling miracle this time it's been like that for years i couldn't tell you how long it's got a little worse over the time yes it has i think there's there's but there's a lot of it's, it's it's just a roll but it hauls a load it does that now didn't he say all these tires are the original except for this one over here yeah this this is not see it's different 
It's a little narrow. It's still an old tire, it's an though. Old military tire. That's exactly right. Yeah, that old white. Look, they, look, there's a lot of weight on that tire. There is. There is. That thing's still running. All that again. All right, <laughs> folks. So we, I just learned why this second tire is different. Now, you used to be a welder, nuclear welder. I can weld anything. Yes, he can. <laughs> now that I see this tire, I'm like, holy well, I can crap. Weld anything. If my eyes was real good, I could, I could weld up piece of, two pieces of wood. <laughs> <laughs> so what he did that's actually the same size rim on the other side yeah but then you turned into a what now see it it, it came that's, that's a suicide rim <laughs> you right made there. a split rim you, had, that's, you, ever, you ever been to one of these big truck places and no. they got a rack you put that tire in that's exactly right you know why mm -hmm. because when they air it up see this crack in it uh -huh. that thing expands it locks in there I thought I'd blow off where it'd kill you. Oh, yeah? Put it in that rack and air it up. If it blowed off, it would hit you, you know. That's what that is. So he made his own suicide rim. Suicide That's rim. a homemade. You could see where he actually cut yeah. the rim yeah, off and then welded her up. Yeah. Uh, I didn't look at that. That's the there way. part I cut, Slater, so wherever that oak over there. <laughs> and then tell us how many tire layers you think you wore off the other one. Huh? He's got about six flies going. <laughs> and Robert, what'd you call that tire? It was a 13 a fly tire. It's a miracle. It's a rolling miracle. <laughs> the sheriff down here in the county, he brings logs out here once in a while. And he was standing around here. He said, oh, Lord, let me move my tire. He said, well, he come out here two years later. And if he walked straight to that thing, see if that tar was still on there. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> We're waiting for it. It was still on there. And he aired it up for the first time in 23 That's years right. last yeah. week. That's right. That's right. Because <laughs> only because he added the other and tire. never leaked any air. I mean, it's been, I ain't never had to put it in. Oh, my God. And I hadn't put none in. That so tire in good shape. They could put that on the space shuttle. <laughs> Six ply gone. It's one of the nylon tires, but that's. Nine That's impressive. See here how much I cut off of there? I uh, see. You see cut it? you cut off like three inches I worth. I cut it right in yonder. I cut all you that. cut four inches worth. And then took that band of that other end and laid it down on there. It on see, there's... there's a little dry right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's ingenuity, though, because... It is. I don't think most other folks would have done that. But I don't even know how to fix it. Like you got to be... <laughs> you got to have some know-how. <laughs> or you gotta be really special. 60, I think that's a 68 model. Okay, 68 model, six cylinder gas engine, because it has a distributor, right, Mr. Robert? I looked at it, I'm like, that's a diesel? No, it's got spark plugs, it ain't no diesel. Yep. <laughs> no, that's pretty cool, though. So, yeah, awesome machine. It has been a good one. Mm hmm. Yep. If you've had it for 23 years to haul as many logs as you have, uh, I ain't not. Millions of board feet uh, of lumber you've cut. All I've done to it is put plugs in it. I put a set of plugs in it uh, and points. And it just I sits out here in the weather and you cover it up with that inner tube. Well, so it doesn't I get took, the uh, distributor away. I just started. I it used to cover it up at all, but I got to work. <laughs> I'll take that piece of plastic and lay it up there and let it be a distributor. All, it, the last two or three years, we've had a lot of rain. Yeah. And it, it makes it, 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 it crank you cover up that distributor it per time you it. touch it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I want you to tell them <laughs> about greasing your disc. How you got started. Uh, how you got started, and then how you had to quit and go to town and buy a grease gun. Go on, tell us. Go on, tell no, us. I ain't gonna tell him. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> he getting all bashful now. I ain't gonna tell him about the grease gun fit. Donald. You can tell him. Donald, Donald has what you call a come apart. This is two dogs. His name Donald. Every now and then, if things ain't going just right, he'll come apart. He'll just fly all to pieces. But I'm gonna let him tell you about the grease gun. No, I ain't telling you. <laughs> I'll tell the story. He got a big old disc. It takes about four tubes of grease to grease that disc. Well, he had an old grease gun that he had for years and years and years. Well, he got out there and he started, he was getting ready to ply his field, distance field. So he got out there and he started, and his grease gun quit. It just was wore out, kind of like we are. It was wore out. So he goes up to the auto parts and he buys the best one they got. He comes back, he puts a tube of grease in it, and 
he greased that yes. tube up. Well, he jerked that out and he rammed another tube in there and he's working on it and he pumped it about twice and it quit. <laughs> the grease gun just quit. <laughs> Look at it now, you in here. You go ahead and finish this story. No, I'm not telling you. <laughs> it, it quit. Well, he just, a dog pretty strong. Mm -hmm. He got down on it and he bent the handle on the grease gun. Then he jerked it off of the alamite and he took that thing. And I don't know what he said. Probably don't want to know what he said. But he took it by that rubber hose and he began to whip that disc with that grease gun. <laughs> he beat that disc all two pieces with that grease gun. And about that time, the end of that grease gun come out and that tube of grease come shooting out of there. But he did, he had never <laughs> took that metal tab off the end of that grease gun, off of that tube of grease. That it poor grease bump. gun. It couldn't bump. His grandson was out there and he said, Ma, don't go outside. Paul having a come apart. He just come all to pieces out there. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a true story. <laughs>